please join me in the responsive call to worship found in your order of service. Excuse me, introit first. Now, please join me in the responsive call to worship found in your order of service. Accessible God, your spirit moves in ways mysterious and in ways so plain they cannot be ignored. It may be hard to recognize a miracle when it happens to others. We may be confused, uncertain, stuck on our own understanding of the world. But when it happens to us, when you're away from love and access to the unknown, we cannot keep it to ourselves. We must be, we must sing, we must worship with our whole lives. Come, let us worship God, whose spirit moves us. Let us praise our God, who knows the language of our hearts. Let us pray together for peace. All merciful God, on this Memorial Day, we pray for peace. On this Pentecost Day, a day of miraculous power and understanding, we pray for the power to create peace. If we all spoke the languages of one another's hearts, would we listen better? If we listened better, could we prevent the outbreak in continuation of war. God, we pray today for all of those who have died in war in our country and in others. We honor and mourn them, even as we know they are in your loving care. Help us to understand, to listen, and to make peace so that no more will die as they have. Amen. prayer of invocation. Fiery, Fiery God, God, burn down, down systems, systems that, that demean and destruct. Rage, rage with us like a, like a mighty wind when people, people are made vulnerable and are not protected. protected. Speak the, the language of interdependence to our hearts, hearts that we may not be stuck in despair, despair but empowered towards creating, creating the kingdom, kingdom of God. Of God. 
Amen. Amen. And let us continue in prayer, offering the words our Lord has given us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I apologize, I have nothing against the choir. these really cool things, all right? So, so, several weeks ago, and on and off for quite a while now, we talked about how Jesus promised to give his disciples a special present that would help them share the news of, of God, the gospel. So the, so the disciples were busy waiting for that present, and they were hanging out in room in Jerusalem. There were actually a lot of people in town at the time because they were having a special celebration called the Feast of Weeks or the Feast of Tabernacles. And this was an important time that all Jewish people had to honor. They would come to Jerusalem to celebrate it. So there were people from all over the place and the disciples were patiently waiting. Then all of a sudden there was a big sound, like rushing wind. This was a spe and then there was a special fire that did not burn up or catch their hair on clothes, and it landed right on their heads. Look, look. It landed right on their heads. See, see? But that showed it, but that was God's spirit was present. That's what the little flame over their heads meant. And a lot of times in the Bible, God appears as fire, like when he appeared to Moses or to Elijah. Did you forget something, Bella? I have one for you guys too, so, all right? Oh, you've got your name done? Okay. Whoop. So here was the Holy Spirit. Now the Holy Spirit is so, sort of like a go-between. Go so the Spirit makes all things possible. Sometimes we don't know what to say or we don't know how to pray. That's me oftentimes. The Holy Spirit comes to help. Well, the Holy Spirit came to the disciples and appears as flames above their heads, just like I have on my little crown here. And then another amazing thing happened. The disciples started speaking in other languages. And there were people in Jerusalem who, that spoke all kinds of languages, not just their home language. And they were full with God's love. And with that, they all continued talking about the story of Jesus and sharing the amazing things he had done. And a lot of people came to believe after that. The disciples began meeting together regularly. So that's kind of like when church started. They met regularly every week. Right? So it's kind of also the church's birthday. All right? Pentecost is sometimes referred to as the church's birthday. <clears throat> so on Pentecost, which is today, is Pentecost. There's a picture over there of, of you want to go look at it? You can go look at it. Go see what, right there. What do you see? A fire on their heads, right? And do you see men and women or just men or just women? Men and women, right? So, because the Holy Spirit came to everyone, all right? So, um, and, the, and Jesus came to give us life, and he sent the Holy Spirit to give us comfort and help and faith. So, all things that have or will happen are through him. So, we thank God for that power. So, we're going to say prayer. I'm going to give you crowns. You can put them together when you go back and sit down. You can put them on your head, just like I have mine on, all right? And I'm going to give one to your brother later, all right? 
and to Easton, because they're in the nursery. All right, and then we're going to say a little prayer. Let's say a little prayer before you sit down. This is a repeat after me prayer. This is a repeat after me prayer. <laughs> Dear, God, Dear God, thank you for providing all that we need. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Help us to trust in you. And to remember all we have is from you. Thank you for comforting us and helping us. Thank you for your love. We love you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, now you can go sit down. Put your crowns together. The first lesson this morning is taken from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, reading from the 12th chapter, beginning at the fourth verse. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is, who is, to one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of powerful deeds. To another, prophecy. To another, the discernment of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. Please join us on the next hymn, hymn number 391, In the Midst of New Dimensions.
The second lesson this morning is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, reading from the second chapter, beginning at the first verse. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every people under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Fellow Jews and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour, my, pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood. Before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day, then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thanks. Here is the reading. Thanks be to God.
God who communes in all ways at all times, bring us Pentecost within. Bring down your tongues of fire again, and may we practice Pentecost always. Amen. Greetings, friends. It is so wonderful to be back in North Haven with you all. As you have heard, my name is Becca Marin Anderson. I am a disability activist, chaplain, and preacher. And as part of my ministry, I do a fair amount of pulpit supply. And when I do, I like to bring greetings from one church to another to remind us that we are all one church, baptized into the same spirit, as Paul tells us. And so it is my pleasure to bring you this morning the greetings from the First Congregational Church of Winstead in Winstead, Connecticut, which was the last place where I preached. May I have your permission to bring your greetings to the next place I preach? Amen. Thank you. So Pentecost is all about communication. And before we can talk about that, I want to tell you a little about how I understand communication. You see, basically all my life, I have devoted a lot of time and energy to thinking about how best to communicate with others. How to speak in such a way that I will be heard and understood. How to listen to others and meet them with they, where they are, creating the smoothest social environment that I can. I have memories from when I was a pretty small child consciously learning techniques for effective communication through trial and error. Okay, my parents don't give me things when I, when I whine at them, but often they do when I ask calmly and politely. Ah, my friends like it when I make them laugh and also when I listen to them about the games they want to play, and then we all have more fun. I learned that different people would respond differently to different forms of communication. I spoke differently to my teachers than I did to my best friends, for instance. And each person communicated in their own way. The same sentence spoken by two different people could carry two subtly different meanings. And the things a person didn't say were sometimes just as important as what they did. Some of my attentiveness to communication likely comes from how I was raised. Both my parents are pastors, which means they are trained in both speaking and listening and care deeply about the thoughts and feelings of others. They also both studied acting and are practiced at reading and responding to an audience. And they're both book people which means they think a lot about words and enjoy playing with language. All of this means I grew up with people who paid attention to communication and used it very consciously. So it only makes sense that I would learn to do the same. But another factor at play was my blindness. I started losing my vision when I was just starting to learn to speak and for a period of time, I had almost no usable vision at all. My parents tell me that during this time, I started to learn to speak very quickly, going from very few words to complete sentences at breakneck speed. We think I did this because I had suddenly lost my ability to communicate visually by pointing at things or reading other people's faces or body language. I needed words in order to let my parents know what I needed and in order to tell my doctors off when they did things I didn't like. <laughs> Learning to speak, to communicate effectively, was to me a matter of survival. I spend a lot of time in disability spaces, working as a disability activist, and the more I do, the more I come to believe that communication is a matter of survival for many disabled people. We see this most clearly with the deaf community. When most of society communicates in a spoken language and you communicate in sign, 
it becomes very hard to feel fully part of that society. This disconnect can be frustrating and exhausting if you're always communicating through interpreters or by using writing, lip reading, or other methods that take lots of effort. It can be disempowering and dangerous if interpretation is not available and a deaf person is not able to access education, medical care, advocacy, or social supports. And it can be downright, downright life-threatening if the police are called on a deaf person who does not follow their instructions because they cannot hear them. Similar concerns often apply to people who are autistic, have communication processing disorders, have speech impediments, or are developmentally or intellectually disabled. Even for people whose disabilities aren't specifically about communication, there is often a language barrier, so to speak. Because most non-disabled people don't know much about disability, we often have to explain what we need or how we live in much more detail than we would like to. And the ways people sometimes choose to communicate with us are frequently baffling and unhelpful. Another personal example. People do not listen to me when I tell them I do not need help with something. Complete strangers on the street will offer to guide me across the street or to my own front door, and if I tell them I am fine, more than half of the time, they will follow me, insisting that they can help. Often, they will grab my arm without waiting to hear my answer, trying to give me the help they believe I need. My no thank you often goes unheard. On the other hand, if I put, my, put more force behind my words, remove the smile from my face and say it again, they'll hear me, but now they're mad. They think I'm rude for not wanting to be towed around by a complete stranger. And if I'm traveling alone, I'm often afraid to anger people in this way because if I do need help in the next few minutes, I worry that I will not be able to get it. Miscommunication is happening. The stranger is trying to communicate what is likely a genuine desire to be helpful, but they are doing so in a way that pushes on my boundaries and unintentionally communicates that they think I cannot function alone. I. I'm trying to communicate my competence and my desire to go about my day. But that message is either missed entirely or is interpreted as me being rude and ungrateful. We aren't speaking each other's language, even if we are both speaking English. And then, on the other hand, there are the times when I find people who do speak my language who get what I'm trying to say without me needing to strain myself to explain it. Most often, this happens with other disabled people. Most disabled people I meet do not try to help me without my permission, and they listen to me when I say no. They know how important it is for us to be in control of our own bodies and our own care. And even if they haven't had my specific experiences, they hear what my overeager strangers usually don't. I want to do this myself. Sometimes it happens even with strangers, people who may or may not be disabled. I remember vividly one time when I was living in New York City, I had just gotten off the subway at the stop closest to my apartment and was walking along the platform toward the stairs. A man came up beside me and said, there's an exit coming up on your right. Would you like me to tell you where it goes? And I politely told him, no thank you, that's not my exit. Oh, he said, you know where you are. Have a good day. And he went on his way. He heard me. He heard not just my refusal of help, but what was beneath it. I know what I'm doing, and I am competent to do it. 
Moments like this remind me of Pentecost. Picture the scene. It's Jerusalem on the day of one of the major festivals of the Jewish year. 2,000 years ago, the temple in Jerusalem was considered the only legitimate place for certain kinds of worship of God. So if you were born somewhere far away from Judea, as many Jews were at that time, you had to travel to the temple if you wanted certain kinds of experiences with God. By the first century AD, there are communities of Jews throughout the expanse of the Roman Empire, and they speak the languages of the lands they live in. So when an important day like Pentecost comes along, and those who can set out for Jerusalem, they are coming from all over the place, and soon Jerusalem is full of the sounds of dozens of different languages and dialects. And so this is when the miracle happens, right? The Holy Spirit descends on the disciples of Jesus, looking like tongues of fire, and they began to speak in all the languages of the world, proclaiming God and Jesus and telling the whole of the gospel. And everyone can understand it. No one is left out of the message because each person hears it in their native language. And that's miracle enough, right? Any of us who have studied another language know that to suddenly be able to communicate fluently in a new one would be astonishing. To have many people doing so at once, only the Spirit could do it. But the thing is, I actually think the miracle goes beyond that. When I think of Pentecost, I think of access. I think of all the communication barriers I described earlier being taken down. Those who sign receive the gospel in sign. Those who are nonverbal receive the gospel nonverbally. Those who take longer to understand the things have all the time they need. Truly, no one is left out. I wonder if it went even beyond that. Because the book of Acts tells us that 3,000 people were baptized into the community of Christ on Pentecost. And I suppose the miracle itself may have convincing for, been convincing for many. But I'd like to think they came to believe because of the content of the message, not just the delivery of it. They believed because the word was good news for them. And if any of us have ever heard a group of people talking about pivotal moments in their faith journey, you'll know that those moments are different for everyone. Like I said earlier, each person has their own personal language, words and tones and silence that will resonate for them in a different way. I sometimes think of this as the language of the heart, the way of communicating that allows messages to be given and received with the least amount of miscommunication possible. That's what I think happened at Pentecost. I think the Spirit allowed the disciples to speak the language of each person's heart and so they communicated in the, way, in the way that each could best receive. For some, the message might have been an eloquently argued scriptural analysis. For others, it might have been a joyful sign conversation telling the story of the life of Jesus. For others, it might have been a gentle squeeze of the shoulder and the words, God loves you. Everyone needs something different in order to believe. Just as Paul reminds us that we all have different gifts, so too do we have different languages of the heart. And the miracle is that one spirit can connect to all of us in our own way. So what does this mean for us? 
the Holy Spirit descended on Pentecost over 2,000 years ago, what does it mean for us now? To me, Pentecost is a call to each of us to become fluent in the languages of one another's hearts. It's not easy. We all know, I think, that miscommunications happen all the time, even with those we know best. We are not the Holy Spirit with the ability to illuminate all that a heart wants to say or longs to hear. But that doesn't mean we can't try. I believe we can practice Pentecost. We can listen deeply, we can ask thoughtful questions and listen some more. We can try out what's called reflective listening, where we echo back what someone said to us in our own words to see if we understood it. We can pay attention to the quality of silence. And when we do that, friends, I believe we can create the kind of access the disciples experienced at Pentecost. Imagine what it would do for the disability community if we were not always the ones putting in the lion's share of the communication work. What if we all learned American Sign Language and paid attention to how particular deaf friends and acquaintances translate the language of their hearts through their hands? What if we learned our autistic neighbors' ways of carrying on conversations? and tried out texting, or watching TV shows together, or playing with animals? What if, just a thought here, we asked blind strangers we encounter in public what, if anything, they need, and got out of their way if they tell us they're fine? What greater connection, interdependence, and joy could we all have? If you have never met someone who understands the language of your heart, I pray that you do. I pray that we all do. May we learn these languages ever better as we practice Pentecost together. God communicates in all ways at all times. May we find Pentecost within. Bring down your tongues of fire again, and may we practice Pentecost always. Amen. Now is the time when we gather to pray as a community, to lift the joys and concerns of our hearts up to God. I believe Jim has some pastoral prayer concerns. I do. Pastor Thank Scott, you. this morning, please. I invite us to live up prayers for those the names in our order of worship. Recognize that today's flowers are given by Beth Anderson, remembering all the veterans and their families on this Memorial Day weekend. In our prayers this week are Merrily and George Gladkowski, Linda Rankin, Linda Shannon, Marcia Folds, Marlene Bologna. Shirley Ryan, Joyce Bolanio, Ellen Robert, and David Gould. In the coming week, we wish happy birthdays to Martha Butterworth, Jeannie Reardon, Wendy Russo, Susan Compton, and David Nottingham. We have also received these prayer requests to, for D Dwight Hall, brother of Sally Pilato, who was scheduled for heart surgery this week. We also lift up in our prayers Nancy Mahoney and her parents, Fred and Muriel Tiedemann. Ray Phillip, father of Jackie Jennings, Kathy Welch and her brother David Griffiths, Meg Adams, Linda Shannon, recovering from knee surgery, and all those who will gather for the footsteps in the sand women's spiritual retreat next weekend. Holding all of these close to our hearts, let us pray. Loving God, Thank you for uniting us here today. Thank you for the joy we find in community, the love we share for one another, and the love we share with our dear ones beyond these walls. 
The bonds that unite us are beautiful to behold, and we are grateful for them. And at the same time, the ways we are united to one another may bring us pain, as those we love suffer, adding to the suffering that begins with us. We may struggle physically, mentally, financially, in work or school, in relationship or the loss of relationship, and in a million other ways, as can those who are close to us. Be with us in our struggle, O God. Hold especially close those who we have lifted up in prayer this morning and those people and situations which remain unspoken. May the bonds of love spread this that spread this suffering also spread comfort, healing, and love as they hold us in our times of need. And God, we also pray for the world in which we all live. We are connected to people and places we have never met by virtue of sharing this one planet. And because we are all your children, made in your image. War, natural disaster, exploitation, injustice, whether they happen close to home or far away, we feel their impact even when we do not know it. On this Memorial Day weekend, we pray especially for all those who have served and fought in wars or militaries. We pray for those who have died and for their families. And we pray for the veterans who survived and the struggle and pain that comes with the return home. God, we pray for peace, safety, equity, and justice. May the bonds that unite us all stretch all around the world until all are held and cared for as they need and wars everywhere cease. Hear now the silent prayers of this gathered community. God, in the Gospel of John, Jesus prayed that we may all be one. So also we pray. May we be one, and may that oneness help us to face the struggles of our own lives and ease the collective suffering of the world. In your name we pray. Amen. Is the time where we will receive this morning's offering. The baskets come to you. You may place your gifts within, or I think there's a way to give online. I don't actually know that, <laughs> but I assume there are other ways <laughs> if you need them. Friends, the gifts of God are for us all. As the Holy Spirit is poured out on all, gives access to all, May our gifts be for all, and especially for those most in need. May we offer what we have been given and live into the transformative spirit of Pentecost.
abundant God, we seek a world where all find belonging in community and hear the good news in the language of their hearts. Take our gifts and help us to use them to create a more accessible church, society, and world where all are understood, known, and loved. Amen. Is of God, Jesus Christ, be with you always. Please join in our closing hymn, number 205, like the murmur of the dove song. we have gathered to worship as the disciples did on Pentecost, and where the world came to them and the Spirit gave them the ability to speak the language of others' hearts, we must go out into the world, and we must learn the language of another's heart ourselves. Let us live into the spirit of Pentecost, of access, of communication, of community. Let us go forth and practice Pentecost. Go in peace. Amen.